avid readers, book nerds, or casual observers. Welcome to the Read Along, brought to you by the Lit Roundtable. I'm Anna. And I'm Joseph, and this is our Read Along of The Republic of Thieves by Scott Lynch. Week one! Week one, the first section. Yes. Now, a little housekeeping here at the beginning of this. Um, because for today we were supposed to read the prologue in chapter one. And as Joseph pointed out before we started recording, there are interludes again. So we're back with the like sections after the chapter. Mm -hmm. Um, and when I was putting together the reading schedule for this book, I tried to do our two chapters every week that we normally do. Um, but some of these chapters are super duper long <laughs> mm -hmm. and your girl is in school and can't be reading 200 pages yeah like it was a lot that's like a lot today was 100 pages as joseph pointed out so mm -hmm. um so for this week we read the prologue in chapter one next week is chapters two and three and then we're doing single chapters for most of this so okay um and then until we get to the end and then we will do a double on week eight. And then week nine, we're actually reading three chapters. So, um, but that's because the epilogue is very short. Okay. Or one of them is very cool. short. And it didn't make sense to split it up. To leave that so, out. Um, yeah. Anyway, so we have our reading schedule posted. So if you're confused, check that out. Um, or, you know, at the end of every episode, we'll say what the next reading assignment is for the next episode. But... Just so you're not confused, <laughs> it's a little yes. different this time around. Because which is okay. Long chapters. I yeah, <laughs> I'm also okay with not reading 200 pages for one of these. Yeah, that's also a lot to talk about in one sitting. Very for, true. Yeah. Very true. So, so I support it. Thank you. I appreciate your support. I kind of made that decision unilaterally once I because what I do is I'll put st um, sticky notes in the book on the chapter so that I know like the sections, and I was mm -hmm. like, geez, I've got to be getting close to that chapter soon. And it was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> nope. That's like a quarter not. of the book. <laughs> yeah. That's too much. So, and it's not a short book by any means. Right. So, anyhow. Cool. All right. Yeah. Well, shall we Shall we dive in? We shall. Cool. Um, prologue was called The Minder, and then chapter one... Well, part one of this book is called Her Shadow, and chapter one is Things Get Worse. So. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And did, do the interludes get names? Yes. The interlude is called The Undrowned Girl. Mm. So you guys. We met her. We met her. We know who Sabitha is now. Yeah. I'll admit, I was a little surprised that um, Locke knows her from his thief maker days in Old Come Old. Yeah. I thought that she was just with Father Chains when he got there. Yeah. I didn't realize that she that they had met uh, way over there. Yeah. Um, yeah, crazy. But that was really cool. Um, yeah. We got we got like bookends on this section of mm -hmm. flashback bookends. We got to see yeah. um, him meeting her and then them kind of doing their first job ish in the interlude. And yeah, sort of ish. I mean, yeah, we'll we'll get there. But <laughs> it was cool uh, getting to meet her. Yeah. Um, and Locke we, also enjoyed meeting her. Yes, it was it was so cute because he's like five, six, or seven, right? We don't know how old Locke is. Locke doesn't know how old he is. He's a little kid. Yeah. And he's yeah. like instantly enamored by her because um, she's exactly. older and she's tall and has this glorious curly red hair and. Um, yeah, he's pretty smitten right off the bat. And he wants mm -hmm. to, like, prove himself as a good little thief. <laughs> but he's already gotten a reputation. I had totally forgotten that part of his backstory is that he tr accidentally burned down, like, an entire neighborhood. <laughs> I had totally yeah. forgotten. Um, so that came back yeah. around. Which was, it was nice to get a refresher on that. Yes, for um, sure. It was going to be back in mm -hmm. That's That feels good. Yeah. You know, I I was thinking about that as I was reading. Because I, I like the glimpses of them as kids. I think mm -hmm. it's fascinating. And I think that Scott Lynch does a really nice job writing them as younger versions of themselves. For sure. Yeah. Um, and so I think in the last book I missed that. 
because yeah. we didn't have any flashbacks to them as kids. We had flashbacks to the time between the two books, but nothing back to like when they were kids mm-hmm. in Red Season Red yeah. Series. So. Um, this already feels much more familiar to the first book. Agreed. Um, agreed. Already. So. Yeah. Yeah, I would almost say that you could skip the second book, except that you wouldn't have any idea why Locke is in the predicament he's in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so or why Jean has a random lock of hair. Right. Like, who does that belong to? Yeah. Right. But I feel like sure. I feel like this book connects better to the lives of Locke Lamora. Like, they feel more similar. Mm-hmm. At least so far. Um, which is not to say I didn't like Red Seas Under Red Skies. I did. Just It was a bit of a departure. It was a departure. Um, so we learn that, that Locke, poor little Locke, he's a little scrawny kid, and he gets picked on a lot. Yeah. Um, I just feel bad bullied. for him. Yeah. Like, heavily bullied. Um <laughs> Yeah. Uh, the Thief Maker, I remember him kind of like giving me the ugh, before, and now I'm really just like, ugh, I do not like this guy at all. No. I mean, Cause he calls he's like got his, a bunch of... Well, yeah, I guess like human trafficking is definitely at play here. But, um, They're child slaves. <laughs> right. But then he calls them his little loves, and that just like gives me the ick so hard. I'm like, ugh, this old man. Yeah. Yeah, gross. And then Father Chains is so like, like he, you can tell that he really cares about these kids that he's got yes. under his care and he wants them to be successful. And like the thief maker has like a fake fatherly persona, yeah. but Father Chains is actually like, yeah, fatherly yes. to the people that he brings in. Yeah. Um, we learned a little more world building. So we learned about reprimand day. No, penance day. Sorry. Reprimand Day was something else. Penance Day, which is basically like mm-hmm. where they hang the people that were caught. A designated day. Yeah. To hang people. Um, and this is apparently a good time for the thieves to go out and pick a pocket. Which is ironic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's very, very ironic. Very funny because they're like hanging thieves. <laughs> yes. And they knew, uh, like, I felt so bad because a couple of the little kids that Locke is with are like, traumatized by this whole which obviously they're traumatized by this whole thing but yeah i just feel yeah. I just feel bad for him <laughs> and one of them i think is like definitely autistic or something oh yeah um yes the, uh, the toothless kid that mm. keeps getting beat up because he's weird and he keeps he like has fits and stuff yeah and poor guy yeah, yeah. no for sure i had the same note it's like oh no teeth i think is for sure neurodivergent mm-hmm um, there were some like really f- wonderful quotes already. Um, and in the prologue, I had one from when he first, when Locke first sees Sabitha. And it says, mm-hmm. all he knew was that near her, of all the girls he'd seen in Shades Hill, he felt touched by something mysterious and much vaster than himself. Oh, <laughs> It's so cute. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I think it's cute because we like... If we didn't know that Locke had been pining for Sabitha for two books, it would be like, ah, oh, what a cute kid. But since we mm-hmm. know that they end up having history and, like, he's destroyed by her disappearance or mm-hmm. whatever. He, like, like, still can't get over her. Yeah. Like, that was his one true love. Yeah. Soulmates. Um, she couldn't care less about him. <laughs> She's yes. yet. Yes. Yet. Yeah. She's like this kid. Anything else you want to say about the, the prologue? I know a lot happens in the prologue. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was really good. I said it before, it was really good to be back in Camorra's familiar, mm-hmm. felt like going back to home turf, um, and getting to see more of the flashbacks. I really missed father chains. I really missed, um, well, I guess this is the next, the, the interlude, but like, I really missed seeing the, the twins and, Father yeah. chains. And I mean, we could skip ahead and talk about the interlude. It's not like it impacts. Yeah, it doesn't really impact too much. No. But yeah, so the interlude was was really was really fun getting to, and then we got to see like the the twins 
sing and it was like they harmonize really well because they're twins yeah that's and cute. I'm like oh oh we should mention that at the end of the prologue um it's believed that sabisa has drowned on a job yeah and she disappears yeah, and was... Locke is distraught about it and he mm-hmm. believes that she's already dead yeah at the end of the prologue the, st- the story is she drowned yes so um, anyway which brings us to the interlude after yeah. chapter one, which was the un undrowned girl yes. is what it was. Yes. So yeah. Um flash forward to Locke being with Father Chains and the Gal uh, Galdo and Caldo. The sound Calo of and Calo and Calo Galdo. And Galdo. The sounds um, the of the sounds of tweens. Yes. So he's back with them now and it's all fun and games. Uh, it really doing, is learning how to read arithmetic. Yeah. Um, learning how to be a fake priest of this church. <laughs> yes. Um, but like, I don't know. Then... I don't know if fake is really fair because they do believe it. They just also believe in stealing from people. Well, they don't actually worship Paralandra. Well, they that's worship true. That's true. A different, the the thirteenth. Right. You're right. It's a scam, but yeah. Um, and then Sabitha shows up. Mm-hmm. She was off away doing training. She was learning how to dance. Yeah. And um, she's very good at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was, it was fun seeing, I also hadn't read a book in a while where they like had a, had a song break, like Lord of the Rings style. And yeah. that kind of happened in, in this did. too. Yeah. Um, when they're playing chess and... Like Father Chains and Galdo are playing chess, and then uh, the other twin starts playing and singing, and they sing this really, really, really crass song. Oh my gosh! It made me <laughs> chuckle. It's like Father Chains is like, "Where'd you learn that?" Tolkien, but not Tolkien at all. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> yeah. Very good. And then Sabitha comes in. Um, Locke is flabbergasted. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just. It was very. It was a very fun interlude to read. Yeah. Um, I think because we've just been waiting to meet this this girl for so long. Mm-hmm. It's like finally, we finally like get to see them interact with each other. And it's just like, uh, it's like a tension release. Like it's it's finally happening. Yeah. Um, it's not like in present time. So we don't know if she's going to show up in present time. But at least we get these little glimpses. Yeah. I, um, I love that we're learning that she had a huge role to play in teaching Locke how to be a thief like Mm -hmm. even when they were with um the thief maker she's like his keeper right his minder hence the title of the Mm -hmm. of the chapter and she um is giving him tips and tricks and and now um that they're both part of father chain's gang (laughs) they're um they end up going on a on a mission together and i gotta say the whole time that this was like that she was setting it up and telling him like how do you get away and all this stuff i was like this is fake this is a test for Locke. i knew it was fake when he was holding the plank to stabilize it so she could get across and she mm-hmm. wouldn't go across i'm like beth sabitha yeah cross the plank it's not hard i know you can do it and she was just like standing there like run away lock run away I'm like bro this is so fake <laughs> like, yeah. but even before that like when they were plotting and they made lock go to bed and they didn't tell him any of the plan and they had all been like plotting all day i was like mm-hmm. this is super suspicious yeah um and yeah, it, it turns out that that's exactly what was happening. I wasn't expecting it to be like a, what is that Star Trek, the impossible test that they make all the cadets do in Star Trek, the, Kobe- oh, the Kobayashi Maru. Kobayashi Maru. Yeah, something like that. It was that, essentially. Yeah. Like there is no winning. An unbeatable test. Yeah. Um, and Locke is so mad that they would do that because it ends up with him having to like give Sabitha a poison to kill herself so that they don't interrogate her out. and torture her. And, right. Yeah. And it's like she, he had already, he had already grieved, mm-hmm. you know, like he had already, he thought that she was dead already once mm-hmm. and then she's back and then you have to go and help her kill herself. Like, are you, yeah. Yeah. Like he was furious. I think this is like the first time that he has ever been that angry probably. Um, well, yeah. Yeah. It's messed up. You I mean, lied. We do find it's out. It's not fair. It's not fair. Yeah. We do find out in like a very brief sentence 
that he did kill his bulliers, those two boys. I feel like maybe that was in the first book, and I was just can't it? remember it. Maybe it was, and I also can't remember it. Like so, he may have, like he didn't outright just like stab him in the sleeve, oh, but I think he, or- he he may have orchestrated them getting caught or something. Yes, that does sound very familiar. It's been over a year since we read the first book. It's been like two years. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I think you're right. Mm-hmm. So it's good to have that reminder, though. He found a way to dispose of them. <laughs> it's very windy here, so if you hear craziness yeah. in my audio, I think my dumpster just like blew over. Oh, well, it's very stormy here. We have like a tornado watch until eight. So oh, fun. <laughs> if there's thunder, you know, it's just, you know, if there's background noise, there's nothing we can do about about nature. <laughs> it's you know, true. it's true. I just I startled. So I was like, I bet that that got picked up. Yeah, it's fine. Um, but yeah, so we we we're learning a lot about Locke's childhood and youth here mm-hmm. again. Mm hmm. Cool. Well, I guess we should talk about the actual chapter. Right. The, right. The actual story. Present time. And this one's called It Gets Worse. <laughs> Things get worse. <laughs> Things get worse. <laughs> and they definitely are. So we find out how Locke is faring with the poison. Turns out Stragos was not lying <laughs> about the poison. He was for sure poisoned. Uh, Stragos lied a lot about a lot of things, but... Poison was not one of them. Not the poison. Um, Jean is... Your boy's bleeding everywhere. <laughs> like, just, like, out his eyes and his nose and his ears and now his fingernails. And it's like, this is... It's, it's like radiation gross. poison. Only, like, not. But that's kind of what it reminds me of. You know? It is nasty. Um, and Jean is just beside himself trying to find physicers to help him. Mm-hmm. He's like Russell. I forget the name of the town they're in. Um, oh, uh, Lashane. Lashane, thank you. I was like Lashaney, Lashone, Lashane. Mm-hmm. So, um, so he's rustled up about every doctor of rep, of rep, repute, and even some of no reputation, like like back alley doc doctors. <laughs> yes. You know, um, yes. he's trying everything. He's trying to get everyone to see him. And he is, he's been trying to get, like, the best doctor in town to come and take a look at him. So dusty. Um, yeah. But uh, he keeps getting turned away at the gates because this doctor is a partier. Um, mm-hmm. And just keeps turning him away because he doesn't like doing these cases. Because he's, he's pretending to be, like, a representative for some, like, rich noble who wants, like, discreet help with some kind of issue. And mm-hmm. it's just not working. So... He keeps going home to this like fatalistic lock who's like, John, I'm dying. Stop trying. Give me more wine. Just take the money and go. <laughs> yeah. Just leave me. Let me die. It's fine. Go live your life. And John's like, no, I will. Every waking hour, I will be trying to save your life until I can't anymore. Which I'm like, mm-hmm. oh. John is so like ride or die. Like he literally is. he is. He is so loyal. I just love him to pieces. He's like a very, um, a very like way more aggressive Samwise game. Yes. Oh, that's a perfect description. Uh, it's so accurate. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And like to the point that he's brought back someone that's helped them before with like pain meds or whatever at one point. Um, what was that guy's name? Malcor. <laughs> And mm-hmm. that, that he's just like, he's one of the back alley doctors and he's like, Oh yeah, give him this. And uh, just keep giving it to him until he's gone. <laughs> like, yeah. he's, this this physiker is like, we're in palliative care. Like, we're just trying mm-hmm. to make the last few days as pain-free as possible. Um, yeah. And Jean is having none of that. And another great, did you catch this quote? Um, there were so many. There were so many. But the, specifically from Malcor talking to, to Jean, because... You know, mm-hmm. they can't figure out what the poison is. He says, I can't name the poison that's killing your friend, but the one that's killing you is called hope. And I was like, oh, right to the heart. Because mm. it's so true. Because John is like not yeah. taking care of himself at all. Just just with the barest of hopes that he'll find something to help block. Yeah. <sighs> You remember like all the really nice, inspiring quotes, and I just remember the 
incredible insults that get hurled at, at people. Well, like, <laughs> the incredible insults are not podcast safe. <laughs> yeah. So, they're there. And I, I definitely, when I'm reading, I definitely do. Like, even when I read The Lord of the Rings, I'm like, oh, look at that amazing quote. It is 100% raining right now, so I apologize for the fun, uh, like, white noise that is what it's going to sound like in the background. So, apologies, everyone. I, I can't I control it. could have left my heater on. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, the one that I do remember for sure is podcast safe, though. It was, like, one of the... Um, the twins was going like ew gross about something and then Father Change was like uh, spoken just as, as the midwife that birthed you two <laughs> <laughs> yes that was a good one Father Change is pretty great <laughs> uh, anyway um, so so Jean does not give up and he goes nope. and he kidnaps the best physicker in town mm-hmm. who's Odesti that was like, quite the quite the ordeal. <laughs> yeah, because he has to he has to like hold a knife to the the gatekeeper guy, mm-hmm. and then barge in and like gag a girl that was with him and mm-hmm. throw her in the closet, and then like get his carriage driver to take them to their place. It was just very involved. Mm-hmm. Um, but he is determined. Yes, for sure. And but when uh, they get there, the the doctor gives him a full and thorough examination. He does. <laughs> And determines that there's nothing he can do. Right. He <laughs> asked them. All if, knew. Right. He asked them if there's a few things like, did you try this or this? And they're like, no. He goes, well, those might have helped. <laughs> but it's too late now. But I don't think they would have. I'm, I'm so. pretty sure they wouldn't have. I think some of the things he he was saying were like ridiculous, like super, like, did well, you swallow a topaz? <laughs> It was amethyst, but or, yeah, um, amethyst, whatever. <laughs> but no, the thing I was thinking, he was like, "Did you, did you like make yourself regurgitate after you took the poison?" And I'm like, mm-hmm. they didn't. So, which like, we don't know how fast acting the poison is. So, might not have done anything. And they also didn't know that they had been poisoned until like a significant amount of time after it had happened. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so yeah, that doesn't that doesn't pan out, and they they get I don't know ambushed the next day. <laughs> yeah, well, because Jean goes and drops the doctor back off. Well, in a random alley, mm-hmm. um, they drop him off in a random alley, and then the next day they get ambushed because lo and behold, this guy's like the doctor for all of the well-to-do people in this town, mm-hmm. and they they took offense to Jean threatening their doctor's life, and so. A bunch of, uh, they're not like, were they criminals or were they just like no um, enforcers whispers of a sort? Cortessa. Right. That's right. Cortessa. But whispers they're, is like a title. They're kind of secret policey. Yeah. Yeah. And so they show up and kick them out. They're like, we're taking all your stuff except for the clothes you have and some of your weapons and you better leave town. Right. And the only reason that they let them leave is because they're Kamori and they're like, if we kill you, it's possible that another crazy Kamori is going to come and try and get you. So we just want you to leave so that we're not going to mm-hmm. have to deal with any more Kamori. <laughs> you could be you could be some random person's cousin from over there yeah. and we just don't need that drama. So. Exactly. Which, I you love- know, fair <laughs> i love the uh i love how notorious Komori is in other parts of the world mm-hmm. it's like uh the people there are nuts is, is yeah. basically what we what we can gather from other cultures but yeah yeah and then i thought sabitha showed up me too it, this lady was old the, she was old but i was like she could be in a costume though right because we know that like yeah the, the father chain's gang they're like masters of disguise yes masters of disguise they're superb at like making themselves look like people that they're not as like Mm -hmm. she could just have a really impressive disguise on Mm -hmm. but no it's a bonds magi lady and like one of the top tier ones yeah yeah like one of one of five or something yeah and they were, because these... she had like the tattoos on yeah. her on her wrist, and they were like, they're like, how many, how many is that? Because they know like the more you have, the more powerful you are. And she was like, as many as you can have. And I was like, mm-hmm. oh dang, 
She's maxed out. Yeah. <laughs> she's level 20. She's, she's, she's level capped. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. You found a level 20 wizard. And her um, name? Patience. Yeah. Perfect. Reminds me of the weird torture guy from the first book. What, didn't he have a weird name like that? Uh, oh. Barsavi's torture yeah. guy. He had a weird name like that too. He did. I forget. He did. It wasn't patience. No, but it was something like that. Um, yeah. We find out from her that the Bonds Magi, like, they're a little annoyed by what they did to the Falconer, but she's mostly like, that was his own fault because he, like, put himself into a stupor. Yeah. Like, uh, whatever. Apparently, they, there's, like, a magical, <laughs> there's a method that they can use to, like, dull pain in their body. Yeah. And if you do it too quickly, it can, you can, like, cage your mind up and you can't get out. So right. he, that's what happened when they, like, whatever they did, they, like, cut out his tongue or something. Um yeah, so I don't remember. I don't remember how they tortured him. I just know that they did. Yeah, um. <laughs> and so he basically put himself into a comatose state. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, she's like, it was more impressive than anything, but like, pre- predominantly his fault that he's where he's at right now. Yeah. Um, but he had a lot of followers, and he was apparently a little a little popular. Right. So his followers weren't happy about it. Right. And so they're the people that were messing with them in Talvarar. And she um, like saved in the market. them. Yeah, because she prevented them from just outright killing them right yeah. then. Because they totally would have. Right. If it wasn't for her. So then, so now I'm like, I wonder if that one lady was working for her. Oh, the the one that... They killed um, the physiker. Whose name I can't recall. <laughs> I want to say no... It but, seems unlikely, except that yeah, she was I, the one that like got them out of those scrapes most of the time. Yeah, I I mean, yeah, I don't know. It could be. I think, I feel like I was picturing her boss being more like a big wig politician person, but right. I don't know. And also, if, that, if it was her, why would she have killed the physiker if like, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. Or maybe she's working working for a different... Um, head honcho bonds major because there's more than Maybe. just patience. So, Maybe. yeah. There was also a creepy moment where like Jean tried to like grab her and then she just wasn't there because she mm-hmm. knows his name. So she has like total mm-hmm. power over him. Um, so that's interesting. An interesting dynamic. Yeah. Um, she creeps me out, but she's cool. Like I am. Yeah. Excited about her as a character. For sure. Me too. And it's also interesting because it's revealed at the very end of the chapter um, that she is the Falconer's mother. Mm-hmm. So, Which is, makes it even funnier that she's like, eh, he did it himself. <laughs> part of me thinks they didn't get along. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Very possible. She'd, she'd, she'd probably been trying to rein him in for a long time. Yeah. And then he bit off more than he could chew. And she's probably like, eh, serves him right. Yeah. The Bonds Major, I seem like that type of people. That you Agreed. Know. Agreed. Yeah. But yeah, so off to a good start, I would say. For sure. Yeah, I'm intrigued. And I'm I'm ready to dive more into the the world of the Bonds Magi and what that mm-hmm. looks like. The the map in the beginning of the book is um Talishan? No Carthane. Carthane, which is the city where the Bonds Magi are from. I believe. Is that the map in my book? It is. I have a map. I have a map in my book for once. Mm-hmm. So. The Lake of Jewels. I believe we're going to get some more fun Bonds Magi stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, me too. Me too. So um, you said for the next time it's the next two chapters? Yes, chapters two and three. So read until you hit chapter four and then stop. Right, yeah. So when we've got these interludes, and there's also some other, like... Intersect or whatever. Yeah. I was flipping through, I saw that. But they're short. Yeah. I noticed. Yep. So just until you get to the fourth chapter. Mm -hmm. Stop. Cool. Yeah. Fun. Good start. Yes, indeed. Maybe we'll meet adult Sabitha. That's my hope. Maybe she's with the. Maybe she's a bonds magi. Maybe she's like. Maybe. She learned the crazy cool thieving skills, and then it turns out 
she had a Euro Wizard Harry moment, and she got um, inducted into the Bonds Magi. Who knows? Cool. It would be cool. Time will tell. We will see. <laughs> All right. Cool. Well, I guess until next time, happy reading. And we'll talk at you next time. Later. Bye.